Okay, this is cool dude Klim here. Well, actually, this is a Transformer. I'm behind the camera. Anyway, even though I'm fighting yet another major bout of depression, I thought I might as well do something. Also, I'm using my old camera just because it's more convenient. As from recording this video, the weather is going to get pretty hot. If you look at the weather here, you can see there's several days at 27 degrees, and that's just too hot for me. It's not helped by the fact that there are a lot of heat-making devices in this room, such as my set-top box, my router, my cooler, and even my fan gets warm, or at least the transformer for it does. Yeah, so that transformer really gets way too hot. I mean, it's, uh, it doesn't get, like, burning hot, but it does get pretty warm, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this transformer instead. Now, you see, my fan's a little bit too powerful for this room, so... I run it on a lower voltage than what it would normally get. And that's one of the things that contributes to the heat in this room, so... I'm going to try it with this transformer instead, and see if that makes any difference. I don't think this one will run as hot as the other transformer did. So, what I've been doing in the meantime is... Seeing what output voltages I get from each of these wires. And this one gives 27 volts. This one is a 21 volt center tap winding, so we've got 21, 0, 21. And there's a couple of 14 volt windings here. Now, if I was to connect all of these in series, that would give about 97 volts. And over here, we've got the input wires. This is the live and the neutral. And here we've got a 120 volt tap. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this 120 volt tap and connect it up to the output windings. So. I can have any voltage from 120 to um, about maybe 212, something like that. And I can find the ideal voltage to run the fan on. Okay, so bring the old faulty meter in. Now I need to find out the phasing of these wires. So I'm going to connect one of the multimeter wires to there. So this is the 27 volt winding, so that should give us 27 volts when I clip onto that, and yes we do. So I'm just going to take this end here and connect it to one of these wires here. Now I've forgotten which is the centre tap on these wires, so I'm just going to measure that. I think the white wire is the centre. If we get 21 volts, we'll know. Okay, yeah, 21 volts. And this should give us about 42, I think. Yep, 42. I'm just going to unplug the transformer while I... put these two wires together. So I'm just going to take these two red wires and connect those together. measure the voltage we get out of that, so... One wire there. And I'll put the other wire there. If we get a small voltage, I'll know I've got them connected the wrong way around. If we get a much bigger voltage, I know I have got the phasing right. So, let's see what we get. Okay, yeah, we've only got 15 volts now, so... Let's reverse those wires, actually, let's, um, I'll just take that one off there. Connect it to that one instead. Like that. Alright, let's see what voltage we get now. Should be much bigger. Okay, yep, we've got 70 volts now, that's more like it. So, now I'm going to connect it to one of these. I'm trying to do this nice and quickly. Is the voltage going to be bigger, or is it going to be smaller? The valve has just committed suicide. It's all right though, I don't see any signs of any breakage or anything. 
didn't have very far to fall. Let's see what we get now. If we get more than 70 volts. No, it's gone down, so. Yep. It's out of phase, so I'll just swap these wires around. Like that. Let's see what we get now. Put that onto there. Eighty four volts. So finally, I'm going to connect these two together. And that should give us about 97 volts if I've got them connected the right way around. If it doesn't, I'll know something's gone seriously wrong. There we are, 98 volts. Well, that's close enough. Okay, so I've got this wired up now. Now again, this is very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Of course, I do. So, the neutral is connected right here. So I've got the neutral going into the transformer and the neutral going into the meter. Then I've connected the 120 volt tap to uh, all this stuff along here. So, let's just measure what voltage we've got here. We should have 120 volts. 123? Well, that's, uh, that's close enough. And over here, we should have over 200. And we've only got 24, so this is bucking instead of boosting. Because, again, I've got the phase the wrong way around. So, I'll just have to unplug the transformer. Reverse these connections. Like so. That's not going to be very easy, because this one's got a great big blob of solder on it. Plug it back in and we'll see what we've got now. Wouldn't be a call to claim video if I didn't do something the wrong way around. Right, that's in again. Let's just give it a little test. We should have 120 volts here. This is very difficult because every time I try to open this crocodile clip, the Thing actually spins around. Yep, got 123 volts there. And what have we got at this end? 221 volts. Okay, that's perfect. Let's see what other voltages we get. Connect to here, we should have a little less. We've got 196 volts. We get it here. I can just get this on there. 151. 137. Now I'm just going to pull this little bit of insulation off, hopefully without shocking myself. Let's see what we get here. Notice I'm only doing this with one hand. 173. So we've got, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different voltages to choose from. So let's connect this up to my fan and see how well it works. Anyway, before I do that, I've got a small little problem. And that's the way this fan, this fan is wired up. Also, the speed this fan turns out kind of resonates. I keep hearing low frequency noises and that's made me paranoid and I keep thinking I'm hearing music. You know, low sustained bass notes, because, I mean, this is what a typical song these days sounds like. I mean, where's the tune in that? So, this would have been the original configuration of the fan. Got a live and neutral here. Live is going into this switch, which can select the different taps on the motor's winding. Or at least I assume that's how it works. I could be wrong. 
Now, because I want the fan switch over by my bedpost and the fan over by the window, and because the wire wasn't long enough, I had to do a little bit of an improvisation. So what I did was this. So in this case, I've got a transformer with multiple taps on the primary, connected that up to the switch, and connected the other end into, into the motor this way. This way I can have a much longer cable, and the reason why I didn't go with like a four-core cable, which would have been a much better idea than I could have kept the original configuration, is because I just didn't have a cable long enough. So this is what I had to go with. The only downside to that is that I only get two speeds available. One of which where the fan resonates and makes me think I'm hearing music, but yeah. So what I want to do is I want to put the fan back to its original configuration. After that, I'm going to need some wire. So here it is. Also, somewhere out here, I keep hearing somebody's annoying instant messaging ringtone or whatever it is. Can you hear that freaking incessant instant messaging beep? I don't know where it's coming from. It might be coming from next door's house. Or maybe the other next door's house. I think it's coming from next door's house. Yeah, did you hear that? Like, every minute or so I hear that. You know, like, minute, beep! And then a minute later, another beep! Maybe another minute and a half later, another beep! Freaking annoying that is. I wish whoever that, whatever that is, I'm sure it's a phone, because that's only a sound I've been hearing in modern times. Hear that in a lot of YouTube videos. Why, why do people use that as their ringtone or whatever? It doesn't make sense to me. See, there I went again. This is the transformer I've been using. Originally, this was out of an inter uninterruptible power supply. And although this transformer does work, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a little bit overkill for what I want to do. And also, this does get rather warm. I mean... It's pretty warm, you wouldn't want to hold on to it for too long, you know. And it's one of the things contributing heat into my room. This is the fans controller, which I've taken off the bed post. It does need a bit of a clean up. But, um, I want to get my two sets of cable here. Connect one end to there, and the other end to the fan. Make sure the wires are connecting where they should be. And we'll be... Well... We'll be in business. Okay, so this is the switch. Some drunk hooligans outside going... And yeah, I've cut these wires so short that I really need to put some new wires on this. And uh, it's got these weird triangular screws. I think I have a screwdriver for those, but why can't they just use normal screws? Well, one of them came out without too much trouble. The others, though... Yeah, they just didn't want to budge. They're in there so tightly that trying to unscrew them, I've just smashed up the screw heads and, well, they'll never get out now. So anyway, I've done a little bit of probing around with my faulty meter. So, this is where the volt um, AC goes in. The blue wire, which is the neutral, is connected to the blue wire here. No surprise. And depending on what position I've got this, it connects the live wire to one of the other three wires you can see there. So when it's in the one position, live gets connected to this wire. When it's in the two position, it gets connected to this brown wire. And in the three position, it's connected to the black wire. And for some reason, when it's in the zero position, um, these two wires, you know, the brown and the black, get connected together for whatever reason. There goes that freaking notification sound again. I'm braving having the windows open at the moment. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to connect wires to this. I'll be back in a moment. Can you believe it? It's past nine and there's still sun. Might be able to see it shining on that house there. It's crazy. Things are looking a lot messier now, so, yeah, I'm doing this. 
My mind is gone. Well, so I've soldered wires onto what's left of the um, cable coming out of there. And this is the other end. So I've got to find out which of these goes to which of these. So this is where the faulty meter comes back into play. So I've got one lead clipped onto the blue, so let's see which one that goes to. One of these should beep. Would be the last one I come to, so... This one is the blue. Okay, so I need to mark that and find out which other ones are. That's that done. I've marked where each wire goes. Why use words when you can use colours? Now I've just got to connect this to that. There we go. That is done. Okay. Well, I've wired the switch to the transformer. I'm going to use better insulating tape. Don't worry, this isn't the permanent solution. I know a lot of you think that I go with the cheapest option available. But this is just for experimental purposes. Also, I have forgotten something. Need a crocodile clip so I can actually attach this to the different windings on the transformer and find out what's the ideal voltage. Because I want the fan on its lowest setting to be nice and good and I want the fan on its highest settings to be nice and strong but not too high. So that's why the transformer. to plug this in and hopefully nothing will blow up hopefully the fan will turn so let's um let's see if it turns on the one yep the fan is turning it's turning very slowly but uh we do have signs of life if i just take the camera off clip that onto there if i can just get that to stay on there It's very difficult to do this and that at the same time. Right, okay, that's on there. And the fan is turning but very slowly. So obviously in my previous setup that was running on more than 120 volts. Alright, I'm now gonna clip it onto the next one along. Should be turning a bit faster. Okay, next one. Probably should disconnect the transformer before I do this. Okay. Still need more speed. Doesn't really like running at that speed. speed we get now that's a bit more like it I think we can go just a hair higher than that I can open this thing without it spinning as I'm trying to open it. I spend more time trying to get these things to open than I do actually using them. So look, I, I try to open this crocodile clip and get it to focus. And it spins round. Maybe I can get that on there. Right. Let's see what speed we get with the fan this time. Right, that's about the normal speed I had it. Now we'll try out the different speeds on the main bit. Okay, that's full speed. And this is on the second speed. Okay. 
and this is on the low speed. Yeah, I think that's working pretty well. Well, I think it's time to wire this up now. Well, here we are. Fan is back where it belongs. Speed controller is on the bed. All three speeds work. This is speed one. Speed two. And of course speed three. Looks like it's going really slow on the camera, but that's actually just because of the frame rate. Don't end up quite so hard this um, time. Uh, that came out all wrong, but I'm sure you know what I was saying. Got the leads nice and insulated, and down here under the bed is the transformer. I know it looks like a bit of a mess right now, and I am going to redo this with proper heat shrink tubing so don't freak out this is not how it's a vent you know this is not the um whatever it doesn't as well is it <clears throat> yeah i'm gonna redo that with proper heat shrink tubing and everything but that's gonna be at a later date okay well before i go i thought i'd better just explain how the transformers wired so this is the basic wiring diagram. We've got transformer here with its inputs and outputs. So, the neutral is connected to one end of the transformer's primary and also the neutral of the fan switch. The only thing the live is going into, or hot, or whatever you want to call it, is just the other end of the transformer's primary. And we get 120 volts out of the center tap which then gets boosted by all of these secondaries that are connected in series, apart from the last one, because, well, 190 volts is basically all the volts I need. 240 volts is a bit too much. 120 volts is nowhere near enough. 190 volts seems to be about right. Of course, if I had used this secondary as well, so I was using all the secondaries, I would get about... 217 volts, but yeah, that would be that would be a bit too much for this room. And that's basically it. That's basically how it's connected. Anyway, yeah. It all seems to work pretty well, so um I'm gonna leave you with that and edit this video. So until next time, goodbye. Eight. Mike. Uh. uh.